Hello, and welcome back to Katawa Shoujo. Currently, we are doing the Emmy route, and uh, I'm pretty happy about that, so let's just continue. The sound of my alarm brings me out of a dream involving pirates and some other stuff I can't really remember. <laughs> I'm a little bleary-eyed, and it feels like it takes me longer than usual to get dressed and down to the track. I have a feeling that a Sal's pirate dream had something to do with Emmy. A glance at my watch reveals that I was right, and I'm in fact running a little late. The thing is, uh... There's no Emmy. That's odd. She should be here. She definitely should be here. I mean, I was late. I guess I wasn't the only one who had trouble getting up this morning. The thought crosses my mind that it never quite stopped raining yesterday. She go running anyway. Seems likely. Emmy's a lot of things, but cautious isn't one of them. She probably figured the rain wouldn't stop, and that's why she was so adamant about running alone. Still, I would have gladly run with her, even if it was in the rain. Heck, if anything, I would have been able to convince her to come in once it got really bad. That would be why she didn't want me along, of course. Even so, I can't help wanting to know where she is. Well, nothing for it. I better stretch and run and hope that Emmy shows up with a grin and an excuse. On my cooldown lap, I'm forced to admit that Emmy isn't showing up. Furthermore, I have no idea where she is. Anxiety gnaws at me while at the same time I wonder why I'm just so worried about her. The run helped to take my mind off of it for a little while, but now that I'm finished, I'm back to worrying. It was weird not having her here. Downright unnerving. It suddenly dawns on me that I've been running to hang out with Emmy as much as I've been running to stay healthy. Probably more to be with Emmy now that I think about it. It's one of those things that are completely obvious, yet somehow I, uh, never realized it. She really is someone I enjoy being with. As revelations go, it's hardly world-shaking. All the same, I find myself feeling slightly shocked. When did this happen? Well, no time to think about this. Though I want to ponder this new development, I have a greater desire to find out what's happened to Emmy. I'll ask the nurse when I stop in to see him. Well, you seem to be in good shape, Sal. That's good to hear. I replace my shirt and stand to leave, as usual. Except instead of leaving, I ask a question. Hey, uh... Where's Emmy? She didn't show up this morning. Is she okay? While I try to valiantly while I try valiantly to conceal the anxiety, my voice and nurse's expression suggests that I failed miserably. You mean she uh didn't tell you? She's sick in bed. Uh what? Sick? The nurse shrugs. Yeah, she came to my office early this morning with a fever. <laughs> to be honest, I'm surprised she made it here. She was burning up when she arrived. I believe she'd planned to let you know, but she asked me to tell you- Ah, shoot. The nurse gives me a sheepish smile that seems at least partially sincere. I told her I'd stop at the track to let you know in case she forgot to. Sorry about that. But we don't need to tell Emmy I forgot, right? I return the nurse's smile with a devious one of my own. Oh, uh, of course not. This is fine blackmail material. I'll save it for whenever I need a favor from you. The nurse laughs. <laughs> well, I guess I deserve that. But you know, I've got tons of blackmail on you that you're not even aware of. So don't push your luck, okay? My expression earns another laugh from the nurse. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Asao. But seriously, don't tell Emmy for God, okay? Your secret's safe with me. Oh, good. Now go on, get out of here. Wait, um, I've got one more question. Ah, shoot. Oh, no, not oh, shoot, but like, ah, just like, shoot. <laughs> Is she gonna be okay? Oh, yeah, definitely. Her fever was high, but it was already starting to go down by the time she came by my office. I'll probably check up on her again at lunch to be sure, but I expect she'll be up and about by the evening, no matter what I tell her. Hmm, maybe I should visit her after class. It takes me a second to realize I've spoken aloud. The nurse raises an eyebrow and gives me a searching glance for a moment. Hmm, well, it, uh, might not be a bad idea. You can let me know if she's taking a turn for the worse, I guess. But no funny business, you got it? I know what meds you're on, after all. I think that's a threat against my life, but I'm not sure! <laughs> By the way, I assure the nurse that my intentions are chast and exit the office. Interesting, the nurse sees me as some sort of potential suitor to Emmy. Even more interesting is how pleased that makes me feel. <laughs> I need a shower! <laughs> The lunch bell rings, and I find myself disinclined to make my way up to the roof. After all, I'm betting Rin knows where Emmy is, and if that's the case, then I doubt she'd bother going up there. More to the point, I doubt we'd have any sort of scintillating conversation, even if she did. 
Chances are, she'd prefer to be alone up there anyway, so I don't accidentally ruin her train of thought or something. Unfortunately, I don't really feel like heading to the cafeteria either. Guess I'll go to the library instead. I need a new book to read anyway, having finished my other one yesterday before bed. Maybe I can find some more by the same author. I love libraries. They smell like dust and paper and ink. All these stories and facts and opinions crowded together in one place makes the air come alive with potential. I'm not sure how to navigate Yamaku's library yet, having mostly stuck to books I brought with me, so I searched the librarian to ask for help. <gasps> Yuko reveal. <laughs> dot dot dot. Hmm, I suppose she's not around. Can't believe it. Yuko, looking rather distracted, suddenly emerges from one of the aisles. Uh, um, excuse me? Oh, uh, can I help you? Actually, I was looking for a book. Oh, uh, so am I! Advanced cryptography. We just got it in and now it's gone missing. I really, really wanted to read that one. Uh, cryptography? Yeah, my, uh, that is, this guy I knew, no, um, I'm not sure how to describe it. Skip to the end. He got me interested in cryptography, only now the book's gone and I think it's been stolen. Sounds pretty terrible. Yeah, especially because now I have to search the whole library for it. Even though it's probably not even here. You seem busy. A little. She dashes off down another aisle and I resign myself to finding my own damn book. I kind of forgot to do Yuko's book, so I- I mean, not Yuko's book, Yuko's voice, so I improvise. Hmm, plenty of choices. Oh, come on, how did I get lost? <laughs> These aren't even printed books. They're all in Braille. I know one person who really likes books in Braille. I guess that makes sense in a school like this, but honestly, it's a little annoying. <gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> Hold on, I need to get ready. Uh, put some cologne on. Uh, get in my Sunday best. I'm sorry, is someone there? A, lil a lilting voice drifts out from behind one of the cubicles set up for research. As I approach, I see that Lily's been reading a book while I've been stomping about the aisles. Oh, no, I should be apologizing. I didn't mean to make so much noise. My, is that you, Isao? I have not heard from you in quite some time. I was beginning to think you'd forgotten all about me. Uh, sorry. Lily laughs in the refined manners of hers and shakes her head. I'm only teasing you, Isao. From what I hear, you've been busy. Morning runs of Emmy Ibarazaki and lunch on the rooftop, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> uh, yeah. Guess word gets around pretty quickly. That, and I can't coax poor Hanago on the roof anymore. You three are always up there claiming the spot for yourselves. Hey, we had, in uh, Lily's route, we had a, you know, a scene where there was all five of us, so I think we can do it again. She chides me gently, though it's pretty clear she's just teasing me again. Still, I feel an odd need to apologize. Sorry, we could eat lunch somewhere else if it's a real problem. <laughs> oh, no. I wouldn't worry about it. Honigo and I have other things to do at lunch, too. Such as reading the library, as you can see. And, uh, drink a lot of tea. Oh, uh, Honiko's here, too. I didn't see her. Yeah, she's on the beanbag over there. Lily smiles a bit enigmatically. Oh, she's around here somewhere. And I'm surprised, as how. You're in here instead of up there. What brings you to the library? Well, um, Emmy's ill, so there's no lunch on the rooftop to keep me occupied. Lily raises my eyebrow and makes say, Lil, no. Lily does not raise my eyebrow. She raises hers. At her, my, oh. <laughs> Lily raises her eye. I keep messing up on this sentence. Let me just skip it. She laughs. My, poor Rin must be left out. It's not like that. Ah, but I'm sure it isn't. Emmy tends to be the life of whatever group she's in. It's a shame to hear she's fallen ill. Will she be okay? Somehow I get the feeling that Lily's just inquiring out of politeness, but I respond anyway. The nurse thinks so. I'm gonna swing by and see how she's doing after school myself. Another raised eyebrow! <laughs> My, what a noble gentleman you are, Sal. It's nothing, really. Just checking out with my friend, after all. Ah, so it's just friends, is it? <laughs> How disappointing. I blush, glad that Lily can't see it. <laughs> but somehow she knows that I've been flustered by her comment anyway and laughs. I'm sorry, Sal. <laughs> I'm teasing you again. Please do tell Emmy that I hope she feels better, won't you? A glance at my watch reveals that I'm very nearly out of time to find my book. Of course. 
Hey, I've got to find a book before lunch is over, so I better get moving. See you later. That was probably not the best phrase to you. <laughs> Even when we're not in our own route, we keep doing the fucking accidental- Oh yeah, see ya. Lily, however, takes my gaff in stride. Until we meet again, so. I do hope we get to see more of you. You know, because I really like you, Lily. You're very cool. Unfortunately, I mean, I'm not going to say unfortunately this is the Emmy route because I'm having fun. But, you know, we won't get to see you much this time around. I never do find the book I was looking for, but I walk out with something else instead. Uh, did he? Oh, my stomach growls lightly, letting me know that I should have had some for lunch. Oh, well. I was going to say, did he come out with the book of cryptography? But no, he came out with hunger. I'll grab some of you before I visit Emmy later. It seems as if time has decided to slow down for the express purpose of annoying the hell out of me. Class feels like it drags on for ages. I suspect that my being consumed with worry probably has something to do with it. Blessedly, the bell rings and I dash out of class, drawing a few raised eyebrows, I'm sure. I spent the majority of the day fretting as unobtrusively as I could. Even though the nurse thinks that Emmy is perfectly okay, I want to see for myself. It doesn't take long to get to the girls' dormitory and make my way to Emmy's room. Standing outside her door, I suddenly pause. What if she's resting? I'd hate to wake her up, especially if she's still feeling ill. Then again, if she sleeps all day, I think to throw off her sleeping schedule. But rest is important if you're ill, isn't it? I can't decide what to do, so I settle for standing outside the door looking like an idiot. Then I hear Emmy's voice from behind the door. Uh, ooh. Can she see through doors? <laughs> Uh, thanks for your concern, but I really am okay. Is she talking to me? I'll see you at practice tomorrow. Guess not. Still, so, clearly she's not asleep, so I can knock with that worry. So, why this clenched feeling in my gut? I wasn't nervous about dropping by the other day, so why today? Granted, I still haven't really had time to figure out this newfound interest in Emmy's well-being. I don't have a lot of experience in the matter, of course, but certainly this seems to go beyond feeling of mere friendship. Could I take that step? Could I even bring myself to risk what I have right now? I mean, it's enough to be friends with her, isn't it? Either way, shouldn't I just open the door and see how she's doing? That's why I came here, right? Uh, what if she's not dressed yet? The image- <laughs> The image that flashes through my mind causes my heart to skip a beat, literally. I should probably not ever think those thoughts again. Not if I want to avoid a heart attack. I suddenly realize I'm still staying in the hallway looking like an idiot. Emmy still seems to be in a little conversation, but I knock anyway. Hopefully she won't mind the interruption. You worry too much- Oh, come in! The door's unlocked! So it is. I open the door and step in, which is about where my thought process comes to a grinding halt. Ah! <laughs> oh, let me press the H button. There you go. Got a full picture. Emmy is sitting up in bed, her hair tousled from a day spent asleep. I think this is the first time I've seen her without those familiar beads in her hair. Her gym shirt and bloomers, obviously hastily pulled on before I came in, are creased and folded from less than proper storage. Her legs lay bare in the sheets. I've never seen Emmy without prosthetics before, yet here she is, slender legs terminating in stumps just below her knees. But as odd as the sight is, I find myself more captivated by everything north of the waist. It seems that Emmy had finished her conversation with whoever was on the phone with her and is now watching my reaction closely out of her one open eye as she wipes sleep from the other. Her expression, far from being embarrassed, is rather one of a surprisingly wide yawn, one perhaps appropriate from such a small mouth. A grin that for a brief moment seems almost flirtatious tugs at the corner of her mouth as she takes a sight of me in. I can do nothing but remain in a state fluctuating between fear, confusion, and not a little bit of lust. Emmy hastily swoops her hair out of my, out of her eyes, fixing it back into place before addressing me. Whoa! Actually, now that I think about it, yeah, she has a decorated dorm room. Lily didn't have one, I didn't have one, uh, yeah, Hanago didn't have one, so I guess we're just, uh, seeing the first decorated dorm room in this entire school. The only one. Ahem, anyway, I know my Emmy voice is awful, but please, bear with me, I'm experimenting here. Lily's voice was awful at the beginning, and then I feel a lot better, you know? You seem a bit caught off guard, as Al. A wave of laughter erupts from her, and I find myself grinning and rubbing the back of my head ruefully. Sorry, <laughs> I've just, uh, never seen someone so disheveled look so attractive. Uh, never seen you without your legs on. 
never seen you look so, um... Uh, ah, uh, sorry. Amy giggles again and moves to sit up a little straighter. I've caught up in the movements of his shirt, very nearly losing myself. I was wondering what your reaction would be. The nurse called until you're gonna drop by, you see? And I know you haven't seen me well, uh, you know, without legs. I respond in a tone of casual surprise. Oh, uh, you don't have them on? I didn't notice. This is almost the truth. I very nearly didn't. <laughs> I'm not trying to be suave or anything, mind you. Somehow I think Emmy would get offended by that. Instead, she sticks her tongue out at me and chucks a pillow at my head. Ass! I definitely catch the pillow and take careful aim before throwing. Emmy laughs and rolls to one side, dodging my shot. The shifting of her shirt distracted me enough so that the next thrown pillow hits me right between the eyes. Ugh! I got distracted by ass! I retaliate, of course. And once I retaliated twice, well, a war was bound to break out sooner or later. And really, when Emmy appears to have far better aim than me, well, it was just a matter of time before I'd have to resort to a suicidal charge. Gotcha! <laughs> bam! Oh! Bam! Smack! Biff! Holy shit, we got the... <laughs> we got the little comic book exclamations. And once the charge was accomplished, well, of course I'd have to wrestle the pillows away from her. And with that kind of struggle, of course you'd wind up in this sort of position. Ah! <laughs> and so I find myself staring down at her from a position atop her. <sighs> Don't worry, dear mommy and daddy, we're just wrestling. She's grinning, eyes sparkling with amusement, maybe a little sweaty now from my tussle. Her chest is heaving up and down, sucking in air. A small bit of my brain that is not currently enraptured by the sight and the smell of her observes that she must still be ill because her stamina is not what it should be. Also, I didn't notice this, but she found time to hastily put on her little beads. We stay that way for a while. I'm not sure how long because everything seems to go fuzzy. Everything that isn't her, anyway. Her eyes meet mine, and deep inside of them I almost catch a glimpse of... What? Fear? Longing? Hope? Uh, Emmy? A cough suddenly convulses her, and I'm almost stumbling in my haste to get off to apologize for everything. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't have. It's fine, it's fine. She gives me a reassuring pat on the shoulder. So, uh, what brings you here? She's still breathing hard, and that causes her voice to shake slightly. Well, before I was so rudely assaulted by pillows, I came to see how you were doing. More comic book shit! <laughs> this earns me another shove, and I very nearly fall off her bed. Emmy's eyes sparkle again, and I wonder how I never noticed how attractive they are before. His eyes in love. Consumed with worry, were ya? Her tone is mocking, haughty, teasing. She throws her arm across her forehead dramatically, grin still apparent from her underneath. Couldn't bear the thought of me laying deathly ill. As we both recover from our brief wrestling match, Emmy appears to fall back on teasing me. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say consumed with worry, but after you didn't show up this morning like a total wuss, Emmy pouts, crossing her arms petulantly and sticking her lower lip out. It's not my fault. Nurse wouldn't allow it. Sure, he wouldn't. I completely believe you. Emmy sticks her tongue at me. You're such a jerk, Sal. So how was your day then, eh? Did you enjoy slacking off? Not really. The phone woke me up pretty early on. The phone? Yeah, the captain of the team called to make sure I was doing okay. Also let me know it was okay to skip practice. Good. At least she wasn't alone all day. Someone checked up on her. Although I can't help but think that it should have been me. Oh, um, that's good. He really keeps an eye on you, huh? Emmy shrugs. It's his job. Part of being the captain means you know where your team members are when they're not in school. Still, I guess it was nice of him to call, huh? Yep, sure was. <laughs> Emmy yawns and shimmies down to a more comfortable position. So how was your day? Kind of uneventful, you know? I went ahead and ran by myself and talked with the nurse about how you were doing. I meandered through the day's events, none of which are particularly engrossing. That's when I'm distracted by an arm finding its way across my waist. It seems that Emmy fell asleep while I was talking, so I draw her blanket to cover us. Aww! <laughs> A W W W W. Let me press that H button. Mwah. Beautiful. Cute. Adorable, even. She's rolled over onto her side and 
now one leg thrown over my legs, effectively trapping me. Uh, hey. It seems a shame to wake her, but I have things to do. I gently shake her, but in response, she only tightens her arms grip on me and sighs a little. My resistance to this position crumbles rather quickly. The feeling of her body breathing steadily is both calming and incredibly stimulating at the same time. My breathing cannot decide if it wants to relax or speed up. Relaxation wins, and I find myself putting an arm around Emmy. <laughs> he said it out loud! <laughs> I think I'm in love. The words slip out and hang in the air unnoticed. At least I hope they've gone unnoticed. Emmy whimpers weakly through her dream, and her grip suddenly tightens again. For the first time since I've known her, I see tears running down Emmy's face. It feels like my heart is about to break. I instinctively tie my own grip and stroke her hair in what I hope is a soothing manner. Words of comfort, meaningless in this situation, spring to mind. Maybe I should wake her. Are you supposed to wake people having nightmares? I can't for the life of me remember. The decision is taken from me as Emmy suddenly jerks awake with a cry. Dad! This is more than I think I want to hear without her knowing. I quickly sit upright and gently shake her shoulder to stir her. Hey, you okay? What a silly question. Huh? Uh, what? Uh, Sal? She shakes her head as if to clear it and quickly wipes her eyes. You had a nightmare, I, I think. Emmy shudders again and glances up at me a little cautiously, as if unsure whether or not she's actually up. Uh, yeah, I guess so. You want to talk about it? Hmm? A speedy internal debate seems to be going on in her head, which resolves itself with a shrug. Uh, nah, I don't really remember much of it. I'm pretty sure she's lying to me, but somehow I don't think I should press the issue. Emmy shudders again and turns towards me, looking a little sheepish. Uh, sorry for falling asleep on you like that. I keep my voice as soothing as I can. Hey, don't worry about it. You've been ill. Yeah, I guess that cold medicine just made me a little drowsy. I guess so. Emmy doesn't strike me as the sort of person who'd fall asleep at the drop of a hat. Rin, maybe, but Emmy's far too energetic. Emmy gives a half-smile in her response, and then just like that, she's back to her old self. Well, uh, prepare yourself for tomorrow morning, Sal. We'll have to go twice as hard to make up for today. I went running this morning. No excuse. Oh, fine. I'll be ready for you. Emmy nods, satisfied. Good. I take this as my cue to exit. Well, I'd uh, better get going, especially if I want to get enough sleep for tomorrow. I, ho I hop off the bed and head for the door. Hey, uh, is Sal? Hmm? I pivot neatly on my heel and face Emmy. She opens her mouth to say something, and then in another first, I... See her falter slightly. She closes her mouth and opens it again. Uh, thanks for, uh, dropping by, I mean. You're kind of the first visitor I've ever had who wasn't Rin. Now, that's surprising. I figured that Emmy'd have people dropping by all the time. She's certainly popular enough, or so I thought. Always talking to people in the hallways. Emmy hesitates again. And thanks for staying around after I... Well, uh, a look of pain flits across her face. You know, it helped. She brightens back up and waves cheerily at me. See you tomorrow! Yeah, see you later. I'm just about to exit the door when something makes me turn around again. Hey, Emmy. Hmm? Anytime you need to talk, let me know, okay? Emmy seems taken aback by this offer. Her grin gets even wider. <sighs> sure thing, Sal. See you in the morning. I am egg- uh, I exit Emmy's room with my head in a whirl. Should I have even left? Was she really okay? I want to turn around and march back down the hallway, open the door, and tell her. Tell her I love her. Tell her I think she's beautiful. Tell her that I'll be there when she needs me. I want to stay with her, to hold her close as she falls back to sleep. How many nights has she woken up like that, only to find that nobody's there? I want to be that person she can be with when that happens. It's a silly thought, I know. We don't know each other that well, do we? The whole idea, while exhilarating, also makes me feel worry. Worry, perhaps, that I'd overset my bounds. And now, to add to my troubles, it seems as if Emmy herself already has an interest in someone else. This track captain of hers who seems so interested in her well-being. 
True, I've only seen the two of them together a few times, but that doesn't change the fact that they seem better suited to one another. There's really nothing to be done about that. <sighs> I need to take my mind off this whole situation. I've got homework to do. Maybe that'll distract me. That was a really, really good part. Oh my god. That was, um, cute, uh, emotional, uh, really like that. Honestly, that would be a really good way to end the episode, except we're not that far in. So, uh, huh, let's just do what they're doing and keep moving on. The night of restlessness has left me feeling fairly groggy this morning. The events of the previous day keep intruding upon my mind. The memory of how Emmy felt against me, the memory of our wrestling match, and most bothersome, the memory of her nightmare. She was in so much pain. I can't stop wondering what it must be like for her to wake up with nobody there. The shower shocks me awake with hot water. Awake, but still worried. Uh, I can't read that. <laughs> Genuinely, I can't read that. Oh my god. What'll happen today? Will things just go back to normal? End of the episode? Back to the status quo? There was connection yesterday. Something that nearly pushed us past the boundary because of normal friendship. Would that have been so bad? My mind goes back to the look in Emmy's eyes after a pillow fight. It almost seemed like she was daring me to go on. Almost. But I can't know for sure. Anyway, the track captain's probably first in her affections. But even as I say that, my mind is already snorting derisively. I'm just looking for an excuse. A reason for everything to go wrong. A reason to not try. It's not as if I've ever seen the two of them together outside of track practice. And clearly has never visited. And he said as much herself. If they were close, surely he'd visit. I'm such a wuss. I'll have to just go for it anyway. Damn the consequences! That's what Emmy would do, I think. Hell, I know that's what she'd do. Which is partially why I'm convinced there's no interest in her, on her end. She hasn't acted either. Maybe because of this track, Captain. It's possible she's got a bit of an unrequited crush thing going on. But who would be able to clarify their relationship? It sure as hell can't be Emmy. She'd probably just laugh and ask what I wanted to know. And I'm not ready to answer that yet. Rin. Rin would probably just give me some cryptic answer or something. And then with my luck, she'd just ask Emmy, who would ask me what I wanted to know. And I've already covered that problem! I wonder... Could I get away with asking the nurse? He seems pretty protective of Emmy. I'm sure he'd know if something was up. And he owes me for not letting Emmy know he forgot to tell me about her being ill, so he'll keep quiet. What if he asked me why I want to know, though? <laughs> I can shake him off. Just say I'm curious as a friend. Uh, he'll buy that, won't we? Uh, he, of course. Uh, that's settled then. After the run, I'll talk to him while Emmy's waiting outside the office. Oh, there's no sign of Emmy when I arrive at the track. She's still too ill? I decided to give her 10 minutes. I'm a little early, and she was ill yesterday, so if she takes a while to show up, it shouldn't be surprising. Uh, <laughs> I'm, pr I'm pretending to be flustered for his sow, so like, I'm messing all I'm messing up all these goddamn lines. <laughs> Still, I'd hate to just waste my time, so I occupy myself by stretching and pacing myself back, forth, anxiously. Uh, what if I went too far yesterday? What if she doesn't come because she's embarrassed? What if, uh... You're early again, Asao! I'm impressed! Just like that, I feel some of the tension leaving my body. Ah! Emmy seems to be bright and cheerful as usual, with no sign that she even was ill the other day, much less had a less than restful sleep. Still, I have to ask. Sleep well last night? It's just a throwaway question. Small talk. The sort of thing people ask someone when they bump to the cafe while getting their morning coffee. But... Not for us, at least, not for me. I don't know if Emmy realizes that I'm actually concerned about how well she slept last night, but the question does give her pause. After a short moment of what seems like her genuinely pondering this, she nods. Yep, uh, sure did. Was it because of me? Did I actually help? Or are you just saying that to get me to stop asking questions? Good to hear. Emmy grins and begins warming up. So, ready to begin? Am I ready? Of course I'm ready. I was born ready. Emmy laughs at my bravado, and we take off running. I keep a steady pace the whole time, breathing steadily. 
I still feel dead at the end, but at least I don't gasp like a fish out of water now. Emmy is positively beaming after the run today. Nice job, Asao! You're improving! You'll be half as fast as me in no time! The last line is delivered with a teasing grin that I've grown all too used to. <sighs> oh, how exciting! <laughs> Emmy begins to run her sprint so I take a cool down lap. She's really pushing herself today. By the time I'm done with her lap, she's laying across one of the. Ah, I'm yawning! <sighs> you can't really speak while you're yawning. <laughs> By the time I'm done with my lap, she's laying across one of the bleachers, looking exhausted. Goodness, you're not pushing it a little too much today, are you? You did just have a cold, you'll recall. Emmy gives an annoyed snort and sits up. I can't make her snort sound reliably. Ha! I'm just trying to make up for lost time, that's all. I went twice as hard today, you know? A good run always gets the kinks out, you know? Clears to mind, too. Oh? Emmy nods vigorously. Yep, it's a great outlet for that sort of thing. She doesn't explain further, and I don't ask. I suspect I know the real reason why she went so hard today. Being sick had nothing to do with it. Something's bothering her. Maybe the nightmare. Maybe something else. But it's not my place to pry. She'd tell me if she wanted me to know. I'm sure that comes in handy. You have no idea! The sincerity in her voice confirms her suspicion. The only problem is, even though I know she'd tell me if she wanted me to know, I still want to know. Something on your mind, then? Emmy doesn't seem surprised when we question. Instead, she shrugs. Nah, it's nothing worth getting worried about. She seems as if she's trying to convince herself as much as she's convincing me. I open my mouth to ask if yesterday I was responsible for her current state of mind, but think better of it. Too much risk of her taking the question the wrong way. Besides, I'm not even sure myself what to think about yesterday. <sighs> really, I can only get about as far as how it felt to have Emmy sleeping next to me before my brain shuts down. Having her before me now, covered in sweat and looking wryly at me, she's making it difficult to think. Yeah, I hear ya. You better hurry to see the nurse. We're running short on time. Aren't we always? Emmy laughs at this, a dry chuckle that seems almost un Emmy like. Ha! <laughs> Too true. For a brief moment, she looks old, worn down by some old hurt. But just like yesterday, I can almost see her shouldering the burden and straightening it up slightly. And then she's back to being Emmy again. Very Emmy ish. Come on, then, Isao! No, that's a terrible fucking Emmy voice. Come on, then, Isao! Brace ya! With a sudden smile, she darts off. Hey, no fair! I take off after her, knowing it won't catch her, but not caring. Even if there's no chance of catching her, I'll still run after her. Emmy's waiting for me at the door as I arrive. Well, well, look who's finally shown up! Yeah, yeah, enjoy your victory while you can. Emmy grins the nurse pucks his head out the door. Well, there you are, coming in, Asao. In what has become a familiar routine by now, he checks my blood pressure and my heart rate. Bit fast today, isn't it? Yeah, I kind of raced Emmy here. The nurse laughs. That's never a good idea. He leans in to whisper to me in a conspiratory manner. I don't know if you've heard, but Emmy's a bit of a track star. I reel back in mock surprise. Really? She never mentioned it before. The two of us share a laugh. She's do okay today. Cole seemed to bother her. Why don't you ask her? He rolls his eyes in exasperation. Of course I'm gonna ask her too, but she'll tell me that she didn't have any problems, regardless of whether or not she did. So I'm asking you, because you're a friend, and probably tell me she had trouble today. When he puts it that way, it makes a lot more sense. She seemed pretty good today, if a little more tired than usual. She was already feeling better when I dropped by yesterday, so I'm not that surprised. The nurse nods, though I notice he tenses slightly when I mentioned yesterday's visit. Well, that's good to hear. I figured it was just a 24-hour thing. Emmy tends to recover quickly from colds and the like. Hey, uh, speaking of Emmy, are she and the track captain, uh... Well, um... You know... A look of suspicion crosses his face. Why do you ask? Well, it's just that it seemed kind of close, and I was just curious, you know? <laughs> and I never asked her, because that would seem kind of embarrassing. So far, so good. Now to really sell it. Besides, I think they make a cute couple. Mm. Ah. The nurse laughs. Well, I don't suppose you're the first to think that. But I think I can say with them certainty that the two of them will never do anything like that. Uh, certainty? Yep. 
Not that I could tell you, of course. Confidentiality and all that. Yeah, right. Just like holding a secret over my head. Ah, yeah, that too. Right. Get out of here. I'm a busy man, you know. I roll my eyes at his last statement and half the door, motioning to Emmy to go in. And the whole time, I'm trying to keep doing a celebratory dance. It's out here in the hallway fucking... Da -da 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 -da. The two of them will never do anything like that. That's precisely the sort of thing I wanted to hear. I'm half tempted to make sort of a move on Emmy right now, but I think the nurse would probably disapprove. Besides, I still don't exactly know how Emmy feels about me. I mean, it's obvious that she cares about me as a friend, but something more than that, I uh, can't be certain. Even so, I can't help but feel hopeful. I just need to figure out a good time to tell Emmy exactly how I feel. That puzzle should keep me occupied for the rest of the day, at least. <laughs> Man, this sound is fucking energetic. The rooftop is completely deserted. Normally, I can count on Rin to be up here before me, but she's strangely absent. I wonder if she decided to accompany Emmy to the cafeteria for once. That seems pretty unlikely, but it's all I can think of right now. <sighs> that was like a triple yawn with a cough. What the hell? <laughs> part of me wants to go look for Rin, but a far larger part of me is too pleased with the way the sun feels in my skin to care. I pick idly at my lunch while I wait for Emmy and Rin to show up. It doesn't take long for me to hear the sounds of someone coming up the stairs. I wait until the door begins to open before talking. Took you long enough. Keeping me waiting for you, honestly. The two of you are... Uh-huh. Well, that's odd. The only person standing in the doorway is Emmy, who looks mildly confused. What do you mean, huh? It's me, you know? Emmy, you run in the mornings. She grins, and I feel my heart jump slightly in my chest at the sight. Uh, y yeah, I knew that. I'm just confused. Uh, where's Rin? Emmy's grin is replaced by a rather guilty-looking expression. Yeah, uh, about that. I kind of, sort of, give my cold. Oh, dear. Am I at risk, too? It would make sense, after all. Emmy and I were in close contact the other day. So what did she and Rin do that got her ill? Steady on, old lad. Don't go down that road. <laughs> Probably the funniest line in this goddamn game. <laughs> Rin's just probably got a worse immune system than me. <laughs> Emmy seems shocked by my comment, like she hadn't considered that before. Ugh. <laughs> I hope not. I feel terrible if you get ill because of me, Sal. Oh man, I think I feel a fever coming on. Emmy looks horrified and then quickly shifts into a more angry expression. Sal! You stop getting sick this instant! I won't have it! And impulsively, she seizes me by the collar. Are you listening to me, you sow's immune system? Get your ass in gear! I give a smart salute. Duly noted, ma'am. Emmy steps back and nods, satisfied. Good! You are not allowed to miss any of our morning runs, after all. But you missed a morning run. Emmy crosses her arms and looks at me haughtily. Yeah, but that's a special case. It was me, not you. That's not an explanation at all. Emmy looks flabbergasted. You're kidding, right? The explanation makes perfect sense. No, it doesn't. It's a blatant double standard. I don't see what that has to do with anything. Oh, fine. Emmy seems pleased by her victory. Anyway, is Rin gonna be okay? She's not terribly ill, right? Emmy shakes her head. Nope, she'll be fine. I got her some cold medicine that should help her. Although I probably should have made sure she didn't try to take them all at once. Eh, she's done it before, you know. Oh. She's done it before, you know? Somehow I don't find this all that surprising. I doubt Rin is one to pay attention to maximum dosages and such. But we should probably make sure she doesn't fucking overdose, what the hell? <laughs> should probably check in on her later then, just to make sure, yeah. Emmy shrugs. I'll stop by after practice, she'll be fine until then. I nod, figuring that line of conversation is over. The only problem is, I don't know what else to talk about. So, you got any more track meets coming up? This is a terribly roundabout way of trying to see if she's free on the weekend. <laughs> if she's free, then maybe we can ask her on a date or something. Well, assuming I can get myself to actually form the words. <laughs> Emmy shakes her head. Nah, not one for another couple weeks, I think. The season's went down. Oh, yeah, I came in right in the middle of things, didn't I? Does that mean exams are coming up soon? I should probably look into that. 
What do you do on weekends if there's not a me? An eyebrow goes up and Emmy gets a teasing look on her face. You're awfully... <laughs> you're... Ah, you're awfully inquisitive today, aren't you? I shrug and hope it looks casual. Ah, just making conversation. I don't know what it's like to be a track star after all. <laughs> Flattery! She waves a hand idly. I'm not actually that good, you know? You're just so happy to see me on a good day is all. You liar. <laughs> yeah. But humility is a sign of a good athlete. At least that's what my dad used to say. She shrugs and shies unsuccessfully to hide the rather troubled expression her face is taking on. Hey, what's up? You seem bothered by something. <sighs> Emmy starts to deny it, then sighs in defeat. I wonder if she's too tired from being sick to get herself to deny it like usual. Or if she actually just trusts me enough at this point to open up. Well, uh, you remember last night? Do I ever. I settle for nodding, however. That's, um, not the first time that's happened to me. Actually, I get them kind of... She pauses if it suddenly occurs to her what she's doing. It's almost like she's breaking some sort of personal rule here. But she starts up again, choosing her words carefully. <sighs> well, um, not often, but on occasion. It's just been one of those weeks where that's what happens. The sigh escapes her, and she looks terribly frustrated. I reach over and give her a hug, which, unlike last time, doesn't seem to shock her. Isn't, aren't, like, hugs in Japan, like, really forward? Like, hugs in, uh, where I live, America, aren't, like, you know, that rare. But, like, hugs in Japan are, like, a big thing, aren't they? <laughs> I'm, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm not Japanese. I don't know that. Instead, she seems to relax as my arms wrap around her. We stay that way for a while. Hey, you know I was serious last night. You really can talk to me if stuff like this is bothering you. It's always difficult to do this sort of thing solo, you know? Emmy smiles and breaks the embrace, but stays leaning on my shoulder. <sighs> Thanks, Asao. I'll be fine, I think. I can already see her re reassembling herself, getting ready to bottle it all up again. Guess that topic's closed now. So hey, giving any more thoughts of that career survey? Can't say I have. I don't tend to plan very far ahead, you know. Although I suppose I could at least start looking into college, huh? I shrug. I suppose, unless you were serious about that pirate thing. Last I checked, pirates don't have much need for universities. Unless there's like a pirate university out there somewhere. Nope, pretty sure most pirates are very uneducated. Emmy giggles and starts to look a little like her old self, but... There's a new element to her expression. Impish. That's how I describe it. Emmy looks impish, looking up at me with her head nestled onto my shoulder. Would you come with me if I ran off to be a pirate? Of course I would. Who in their right mind wouldn't pass up that? Who in their right mind would pass up the opportunity to be pirates with you? Well, when you put it that way, I'm not sure. She giggles again. I notice that my heart seems to have sped up. It's probably due to Emmy's proximity to me. That hint of strawberries again. I can't help but grin as I gaze down at her. She's happy again. Hey, uh, Hisao? Hmm? If you Excuse me for cutting myself off there. Um. Mm. <laughs> if you're gonna kiss me, you should probably do it soon. I think the lunch bell is about to ring. My thoughts grind to a sudden halt. I'm pretty sure my mouth is hanging open in shock. All I can manage is a strangled... Uh-huh. This amuses Emmy even more. You are thinking about it, weren't you? She sits up, bringing her face level with mine. <laughs> I'd probably enjoy it, you know. You're really... Well, she briefly composes herself, looking like she's about to say something important. <sighs> if you hadn't figured it out by now, I think I've developed a bit of a crush on you. You're gonna have to do something about that. This time her grin short-circuits several important thought processes. At some point, I turn toward her. At another point, her arms move to around my neck. At yet another, my arms wrapped around her waist. I'll be damned if I could tell precisely when that happened. Because at the moment, there's only a voice in the back of my head telling me to kiss her. I look into Emmy's eyes. There it is. The thing I saw yesterday on the bed. It's there again. It certainly strikes me that she's worried that I'll reject her. <laughs> What a silly worry for her to have.
if I can make a good squeal sound, I would do that now. Oh! <laughs> oh. Her lips taste faintly of strawberries. She leans into the kiss, and her arms tighten around the back of my head, making sure that I don't pull away. <laughs> Not that there was ever any danger of that. There's a churning feeling in my gut. The world falls away. There's just me, and her, and this bench. My arms tighten, drawing her waist closely. <sighs> drawing her waist closer, sorry, I'm flustered. Entranced by the feel of her. I inhale her scent, my mind trying desperately to memorize everything about how she tastes, how she smells, how she feels. The ringing of the bell snaps us both back to reality, and we break the kiss. Emmy's cheeks are slightly flushed, and she seems to be catching her breath. In her defense, so am I. We stand there for a few moments, trying to wrap our heads around what we've just done. Emmy is the first to break the silence. Uh, so, uh, wanna grab dinner after I'm done with practice? <laughs> what a coincidence. I was about to ask you the same thing. Well, actually, I suppose there's gonna be some kind of proper day on the weekend or something, but the thought was there, I think. Emmy gives me a playful shove. <laughs> yeah, right. You were still in shock from how incredibly awesome I am at kissing. We begin to head down the stairs back to our respective classrooms. Hey, I didn't see you talking immediately afterwards either. That I didn't. See you after practice, Asao. She leans in quickly and gives me a quick kiss in the middle of the hallway, sending me into another brief state of mental freefall. As I head into my classroom, a giggling Misha greets me. <laughs> Why, Hichan, you romantic you! Did you confess on the rooftop? Did you? Uh, actually, I think it was the other way around. <laughs> what? <laughs> this sends Misha into a fresh fit of laughter. <laughs> Young love is so unpredictable, isn't it? This being Misha, I should have expected her to tease me over this. I guess. <laughs> Before I can really respond, we toes into the room and Misha skips off to her seat, giggling all the while. <laughs> I suspect that I'll get a lot of that sort of conversation now, especially seeing as how Emmy kissed me right in the middle of the hall. <laughs> but somehow, I don't care about that. For the first time since arriving here, my heart feels light. Act 3. Perspective. <sighs> oh my god, oh my god, that was so goddamn adorable. Oh! <laughs> I am incredibly flustered right now. That was incredible. <laughs> that's like, um, the big goddamn kiss, you know? I'm pretty sure that's like the name of some trope. I feel, oh god, that was amazing. <laughs> I guess that's a good way to wrap the episode today, huh? Huh. <sighs> Thank you so much for watching this episode of Katawa Shoujo, and I really hope you enjoyed. We got through Act 2 pretty quick, huh? <laughs> god damn, that was adorable. That was... I loved everything in this episode so much. Oh my god. My heart's kind of beating fast now. <laughs> Ooh. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Katawa Shoujo, and I'll see you next time where uh, me, uh, Hisao, and Emmy are now in an actual relationship. I'll see you then with all the adventure that that brings. <laughs> I am extremely happy. Peace!